We are, each of us, the sum total of all our ancestors from the beginning of time. We are the carriers of their passions, love, hate, lust. Sometimes this vast inheritance is a gift, and sometimes a burden. For Daniel Gardner, it is a deadly burden. It all began this afternoon, here, in the office of Timothy Welling, of Gardner and Welling, attorneys at law, a firm that has just been dissolved by death. Look, is my living here a condition of the will? No, no. There are no strings attached. Not even that I go back to law school or promise to join the right clubs and follow in his footsteps? He was only trying to do what he thought was best for you. There are a few things a father ought to be able to give his son besides money and an education. Where did you get this? There were some things from your father's office. I thought you might like to have them. He was awfully proud of you that day, Dan. If he knew he was dying, why didn't he send for me? Pride. One of the stronger Gardner family traits. With him, it was stiff-necked self-righteousness. Always so correct. Dan, I know that being a father wasn't one of his more successful ventures, but it was the one he cared about most. It worked at least. Uh, you know, you weren't very demonstrative yourself. I know it. I know, I guess I... I didn't extend myself either. Dan, looking at you and listening to you, it could be 30 years ago in the same office. You'd look and think so much alike. You're getting to me, Mr. Welling. Why is it that people have to die before you get to know them? Look, couldn't we just turn the estate over to some charity or something? Are you serious? I'm serious. You, uh, doing so well with your commercial art? I'll get along. Why should I take anything from them now after refusing to even see them for the last five years? Well, it's yours now. You could do whatever you like with it. But Dan, your dad wanted you to have it. Refusing it would be sort of slapping him in the face again, wouldn't it? I suppose so. Well, want to have a look at some of your property? Most of it's on the north side. Good, solid investments. Apartment houses, hotels. What's this? What does it look like? A burlesque house? That's right. It's been boarded up like that for more than 28 years. 28 years? Why? Your dad's orders. That figures. How did he ever come by such a place to begin with? He bought it as an investment, and he operated it quite successfully for more than a year. My father? You're kidding. No, I told you. And why did he shut it? Why didn't he sell it? I don't know. He just closed it one day without any warning or explanation. And he refused to sell it, rent it, or permit it to be used for any purpose. I don't get it. Why would he deliberately create a white elephant? I've often wondered. I don't get it. I'm fascinated with the idea of my father owning a burlesque house. I'd like to see the place. Do you think you could arrange it? Well, I'll give you the key. The address is on the tab. 527 Elston Way. It's on the south side, isn't it? That's right. Thank you, sir.
Are you okay? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Slow tonight, Mr. Gardner. Is it? Yeah, you better get Bubbles Yvonne back. She used to pack and jam them here. And besides, I want to keep on working. Is he really worth all that trouble, Valerie, dear? You know, I wouldn't bother with anyone who wasn't, honey. Anyone I know? Could be. Like who, you could tell me. I don't dare. This shock might be too much for you. Really? How intriguing. But just what kind of shock do you mean? I mean you'd be shocked green, honey. Absolutely green. Good night. There he is. Have you been hiding, Philip? Waiting for everyone to leave so you could sneak in here like a little boy? I heard you baiting that girl. That wasn't very smart. Oh, don't worry about Josie. She doesn't have enough imagination to think of you. Don't you have better sense than to call me at my office? Well, I didn't think you'd want me to come up. Valerie, I don't know exactly what you've got in mind, but I went to the bank after you called. I have $5,000 in cash in my pocket. It's yours if you leave town and agree never to contact me again. Don't be silly, Phil. What do you want, Valerie? Do you know why you're taking me tonight, honey? It's a velvet room. You're out of your mind. We'd be in every column in town by morning. Mm hmm. Seems like a good way to start things.
what things? What do you want, Valerie? You. I want you. I want to be Mrs. Philip Gardner. You're crazy. Like a fox. You really don't have much choice, Philip. Unless you'd like me to sue you for breach of promise. That way we'd be on the front pages everywhere. Oh, the headlines would be lovely. Prominent attorney sued by burlesque cutie. And you lose both ways, Philip. Your wife would divorce you and take whatever you had left after I got through with you. And honey, think what it would do for my career. I don't intend to dance in a chorus all my life, you know. You don't really think that because of one uh, minor lapse you can... Minor? Honey, let me show you something. Oh, you love this. Don't we look cozy? Of course, I still have the negative. I can have hundreds more. How did you get this? Well, a girl has to learn to take care of herself. Do you seriously think I'd divorce Lucille and marry you? Under the circumstances, Philip, I don't see what else you can do. Actually, we ought to get along pretty well once you get used to the idea. We make a good combination, Phil. You're trash. I wouldn't marry you no matter what you had on me. I've racked my brain trying to figure out how you ever appealed to me in the first place. If you want to know the truth, you turn my stomach, you're cheap and common. Cheap and common. You're finished, Mr. Gardner. Through. And for a start, this ought to give your sweet, trusting Lucille something to dream about tonight. I'm going to ruin you, Philip, and I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. You're not going to ruin anyone. You're not going to ruin anyone. Do you hear me? Not a soul. Not a soul.
What's on your mind, buddy? What? What are you doing here? I don't know. You don't know? I have no clear recollection. I, I, I was following an impulse. I... Feel all right? Mm. I do now. What is it? Don't question what it is. Point is, who was it? Do you mind if I sit down? I... How about trying to make some sense? Mm -hmm. You knew what was in that trunk. No, I didn't. I swear it. I've never even been here before. How'd you get in the front door? My father's partner gave me the key. He's handling the estate. What estate? My father's estate. He, he left this theater to me. Looks like you inherited more than just a theater, buddy. Officer, how long would you say that girl's been in the trunk? Well, I'm no medical examiner, but she's nothing but bones. I'd say over 20 years, anyway. Then this young man couldn't possibly be involved. That's not my responsibility. There'll be a lot of questions. Uh, Maybe the questions won't be necessary. Would you mind waiting outside just for a minute? Yeah, I guess that'll be okay. Dan, shortly after your father became seriously ill, he gave me a sealed envelope with instructions to open it only after his death. And only if it appeared that someone was about to be accused of a crime in connection with the theater. Sit down. This would seem to be the time. It's addressed to me. Dear Timothy, as I write these words, I pray to God they will never be read. If future events are dictated otherwise, you already must suspect why I have refused all these years to sell the theater. The body that has been discovered in the dressing room trunk is that of Valerie McKay, a girl who danced in the chorus of the last performance at the Gaiety Burlesque. I know all about her because I killed her. She killed her. Strange. When I jumped out of the way of that truck, I hit my head and everything went fuzzy. But there was a, another time. I remember going into that theater. And the girls were dancing on stage. And the music was playing. I remember. I remember. Remember. What happened to Daniel Gardner is called genetic memory. For some scientists do agree that if we could ever probe the labyrinth of the mind, we would then uncover the recollections of all our ancestors. The total memory of all who came before us since time began. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it?